Hi. Our last video left us with the seemingly insoluble problem of gauging the extent of sampling error when all we have is a single sample. We held out the hope of a solution using something called bootstrap resampling. So what is this bootstrap resampling? The name was taken from a 19th century expression to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. This has come to mean getting out of a difficult situation by your own efforts. Bootstrap resampling and statistics began with a 1979 paper by the famous Stanford University statistician Brad Efron. A bootstrap resample is generated by sampling from the sample, our data, with replacement. What does this mean? We'll illustrate using this scenario. Our data corresponds to this sample from some population of interest. We've emphasized the variable BP cis AV because our first example is going to be about systolic blood pressures. For illustrative purposes, we're using a much smaller sample than we'd ever apply resampling to in practice. We want to take one bootstrap resample from these eight people. We want it to be the same size as our data sample. And if we take several of these resamples, we want them to be different because we want to imitate sampling variation. If they were all identical, there would be no variation. Now, if I was to sample eight people from these eight in the normal way, I'd just get everybody. I'd just get the whole sample back. Every time I did it, the result would be the same, the whole sample. So that's no good. Here I've randomly drawn the first person to be in my resample. It's Fred. When I go back to get the next person, I randomly draw from the entire list again. That's what the with replacement is all about. Fred is still eligible to be chosen again, but this time I get Chloe. And so it goes on. Oh, there's Fred again. When we've finished, we see that Fred has been chosen twice and Janet doesn't appear. I'll draw a new resample. Michelle has been chosen three times and several people were not chosen at all. One more time. So we see these resamples are different. The process looks quite a lot like sampling and is going to give us variation. Now we'll start doing this with real data on systolic blood pressures. We'll be estimating the mean. This time we'll use a slightly larger sample, a sample of size 12 from N. Haynes. We'll watch what happens when we do bootstrap resampling using animations from VIT's bootstrap module. Here is the blood pressure data for our 12 people and a dot plot of the data. We're interested in the mean. The position of the mean for the sample is marked at 115.83. Now we'll start sampling from these people with replacement. So as we've said, on each draw, we draw from the whole list regardless of whether someone has been used before or not. Each time we choose someone, their value moves across to the resample column. At the same time, a copy of their point is moved down into the middle panel, which forms the dot plot of the resample. That's it finished. We filled up the resample column, finished the dot plot, and marked the position of the mean for the resample. The resample's dot plot is quite different from the original, and the mean is in a different place. How did the resample get made up? We'll track what happened to each of the original points. The first point was used twice. The next two not at all. The fourth one once. And so on. So this is how the resamples get to be different. We'll do it a few more times fast. The mean of each resample leaves a blue footprint. And now we see a familiar pattern of variation emerging. Do some fast and see the pattern building up. A reminder of how the bottom display builds up. Now we do it a thousand times and watch the pattern of variation build up. The pattern generated by resampling from the sample does seem similar to what we saw with sampling from the population. Here we'll use the blood pressure data and show resampling error for one particular sample of 40 people from N. Haynes 1000 on the left hand side. 
We'll compare that with sampling error for samples that are also of size 40, taken from everyone in NHANES 1000, that's on the right hand side. Does it look similar to you? It looks pretty similar to me. This suggests that we should use bootstrap resampling error, which we can see, to estimate the size of sampling error, which in practice we can't see. Here are several other comparisons of sampling and bootstrap resampling in other situations, applied to the slope of a trend line on a scatter plot, applied to a difference in proportions or percentages, applied to the ratio of two interquartile ranges. All I want you to take from these animations is, resampling variation looks a lot like sampling variation. Our take home message is to use bootstrap resampling error which we can see, to estimate the extent of sampling error which we can't see. In other words, we use bootstrap resampling to answer the question, how wrong could I be? But how do we use it? Here's the basic idea. Let's look at the blood pressures again. We're working with the mean, but the same basic idea applies to virtually any quantity we want to estimate – medians, percentages, slopes, and so on. In the top right panel, we have the data with the position of our estimate marked – in this case, the mean. We then calculate the same quantity for each of a large number of resamples. This gives us a set of how wrong can we be values. We trim off the few really big and really small ones and use a remaining interval as what statisticians call a confidence interval, an interval around our estimate that we're pretty sure will contain the truth. The recipe so far is entirely general. Now we're moving the interval back up onto the dot plot at the top so that we can see the data, the mean of the data, and the confidence interval around the mean all in one view. Now we've pushed everything else into the visual background. This is like hiding the working in a long division sum and just showing the answer. Our sample gave a mead blood pressure of 118.09, and we're fairly sure that the true population value lies somewhere between 112.77 and 123.44, or about 113 and 123. We'll tighten up this fairly sure language later. So we have a general method, bootstrap resampling, for generating intervals around our estimates. We want to be able to say, we're pretty sure that our interval covers the true value. But the question now is, does our method work? We'll answer that in the next video.